Hello guys, welcome back. Today, we are going to see about ratio analysis. Now, in last two lectures, we have seen about balance sheet, income statement and all that. Now, how to analyze balance sheet and income statement we are going to see. We might not be able to see all the ratios today, but we will definitely try and see at liquidity and profitability. But before going to that, to that, let us see the format of income statement and the format of balance sheet again. Now, income statement start with sales. We subtract operating expenses, we get gross profit. When we subtract selling general and admin expenses, we get EBITDA, that is earning before interest, depreciation, tax, and amortization. When we subtract depreciation and amortization, we get EBIT. I'm sure that you might not be knowing what depreciation and amortization is. We are going to take one lecture on that. It will be EBIT, earning before interest and tax. When you subtract interest, you get earning before tax. You pay tax on earning before tax. So you always pay tax on the profit, which is earning before tax. So earning before tax, 30% of that will be your profit after tax. Now, when you divide profit after tax by number of outstanding shares, you get earning per share. Now, earning per share is not a compulsory a part of income statement, but most of the time people would love to take that. Let us look at balance sheet. Now, income statement is of one particular year one particular month, one particular quarter. But if you look at balance sheet, sorry, balance sheet is of one particular day. So as on date. So let's say 31st March, 2020, whatever it is. Now, please understand I have taken two balance sheets, one of 2019, another one of 2020. This side is a liability side, and this side is an asset side. Now, what does liability means? Which the company will have to pay to others. So this is a liability side, and this is an asset side. What does asset means? Which company owns for itself. Now, <clears throat> equity capital. The money given by the owner to the business is equity capital. So in 2019, it was 450. In 2020, it increased and became 500. Loan remains same at 300. Creditors, people to whom we need to pay money because we have taken raw material on credit. Raw material is creditors. Other current liabilities, other kuch payment hai jo hume karna baki hai. That is, those are other current liabilities. Okay. In assets, you have plant and machinery. So, plant and machinery was 350. We purchased some more. Cash remains same. Daters remain same. Inventory remains same. Daters matlab people from whom you are supposed to collect money. Aapne goods becha, you are supposed to get money from them. Those are called datas. Inventory. Inventory is my stock of finished goods, raw material, jobi based nika Now, for 2019, the balance sheet is matching at 900, and 2020, the balance sheet is matching at 900. With this just income statement and balance sheet, we are going to calculate some ratios. Now, first one. The first ratio, I will just write the formulas also. The first ratio is current ratio, which is nothing but current assets upon current liabilities. Now the question is, what do you mean by current assets? Now, anything or any asset which can be converted into cash within one year or within one operating cycle is called current assets. Now, plant and machinery remains there for 
lot of time. So it's not current assets, it's a part of fixed asset. Cash, yes, is a current asset. Current asset. Datas, generally datas pay within one year, therefore datas is also current asset. An inventory also gets sold within one year, therefore that is also a current asset. Okay. okay. Now, let us look at current liabilities. Anything that we can pay off within one year or one operating cycle is my current liabilities. So, credit, equity capital, it's a long term. It's long term. Loan is also for long term. Creditors, you have to pay them within one year. So, it is my current liability and not current asset because creditors is my liability. Other current liability, that is also my current liability. Now, these are your current assets and these are your current liabilities. Now, current ratio formula is current assets upon current liabilities. So, it's equal to let us calculate it for 2020. So cash plus debtors plus inventory. These are become your these have become your current assets divided by what are your current liabilities for 2020? Creditors and other current liabilities. So this is your ratio. Answer came out to be 3.66. Now, most of the companies, if you find, they will not get bankrupt because they are in loss. They will get bankrupt because they do not have cash or current assets to pay to their staff. So, this current ratio should be at least two. Anything better than two is better. That means the company does not have any liquidity problem at all. But having current ratio less than two can bring serious liquidity implications to the company. Now, the problem is, out of these current assets, now we have seen there are three current assets, cash, debtors, and inventory. The most difficult one is inventory. There are chances that the inventory might not get converted into cash within one year. So, that is the most risky. So, in quick ratio, what I will do, I will just take all current assets minus inventory in the numerator. Why? Because inventory is most difficult one to get converted into current time or to get converted into cash. So I want to see how much my other assets, current assets, except inventory, are working for my repayment of money. So let's look at that. So cash plus data, this should be in bracket, divided by your current liability, that is creditors plus other current liability. This quick ratio should be at least 1.5. What does that mean? That means your cash and data should be at least 1.5 times of your creditors and other current liabilities. Now, 
third ratio is cash ratio, which is nothing but cash plus marketable securities. Now, the, what does marketable security means? Anything that can be converted into cash within three working days, this, those are called marketable securities. So cash plus marketable security divided by current liability. This is my cash. Now, it's very simple. You just need to take cash divided by creditors and other current liabilities. This ratio should be greater than 0 0.5, at least 0 0.5. Now, these are the three major liquidity ratios. And this tells how much cash is available to pay off your current land. Now, let's come to profitability ratio. Now. Liquidity in liquidity ratio, you can see that both numerator and denominator are from balance sheet itself. But when we go to profitability ratio, we take one value from income statement and one value from balance sheet. But income statement is of one particular period, one year, and balance sheet is of one particular date. So, it can be a mismatch. In order to get out of that mismatch, when you take one value from income statement and one value from balance sheet, the value which you take it from balance sheet should be the average of two years, which gives us a true picture of what that value is. So let us come to gross profit. The formula is gross profit upon net sales multiplied by Now, look here. The gross profit is from income statement also. Net sales is from income statement also. So I have not taken anything average. But if one value is, from, I will show it to you on return on equity and return on the asset. In this three ratio, I will show it to you. Now, let us see how much is my gross profit. Gross profit, you will get it from income statement upon net sales. And this value should be in percentage. So just convert it. Similarly, net profit ratio. Net profit upon net Cells multiplied by 100. Very simple again. You have net profit means profit after tax. Net profit upon net sales convert it into percentage and you will get 17.5% as net profit ratio, which is also called as bottom line. So a lot of businessmen use this word bottom line. So this is your bottom line. Your operating profit ratio also, the same as gross profit and net profit. So six, seven, eight, nine. Up. So operating profit ratio is nothing but operating profit upon net sales into 100. You have EBITDA as operating profit divided by net sales.
convert it into percentage. Now, higher this ratio, better this for that. Right? Now, three return ratios, return on asset, that is Now, in ca when calculating return on assets, we must understand for what assets are used. Assets are used for creating operating profit. And therefore, I will take operating profit. Sometimes people take gross profit also. It's completely fine. You must know the idea upon Average net assets. Now, average assets. Now, you can use fixed assets because they are used for taking out operating profit. Now, let us see what we are supposed to do, you have operating profit. Yes, it ties your operating profit divided by your plant and machinery for this year plus plant of machinery for last year, all divided by two. And your operating profit how much is 45 percent? Yes, 45 upon 400. 45 upon, let me see. 45 upon 400, how much is coming out to be? 11 percent. So something is wrong. I must have made mistake in calculation. Okay, so let me just put this in bracket makes sense. What does this mean? By using a set of 1%, how much return you have generated or how much profit you have generated. That is given by <laughs> return on asset. Extremely sorry. Similarly, return on equity. Now, for equity, you use net profit or profit after tax upon average equity. Now, when I say equity, equity comprises of equity capital plus reserves and surplus. Now, what are reserves and surplus? The profit which are not given back to the owner, they are called reserves and surplus. I don't think so. We have any here. But let's see net profit divided by equity, average equity. So we can directly take average of these two numbers. That's a better proposition. Again, no, it's completely fine. Yeah. Four percent. Return on equity. If I put 100 rupees as equity, how much return I'm getting on it? That is called return on equity. Now, return on capital employed. Now, what is capital M? Capital M employed means equity plus loan plus reserves and surplus. Sometimes you have preference share also, you need to take that also. So again, net now. 
return on capital employed comes on the return before paying interest. So we will take EBIT, earning before interest and tax divided by equity plus loan plus reserves and surplus and average of this because one thing is coming from balance sheet and one thing is coming from income statements average of let's do that ebit is 25 divided by average of average of what Average of equity capital plus average of loan. We do not have anything else, but put it in the bracket and voila. So for one rupee for hundred rupee of capital invested you are getting 3.2% as your return. So that is return on capital. Now always remember all this profitability ratio, you need to compare it with some other. So let's say this is for company A and for company B, let's say if gross profit is 50%, net profit is 20%. So now you can compare it's okay. They are not very good efficient with their operations, but they are very good with selling distribution. So the cost here is less. The cost here is high. So that's how you can compare. But in general, all these ratios are higher the better. If you have any questions, please put it in comment. I will definitely reply to Remaining ratios we will take in the next lecture. I hope you have enjoyed the session. If you have enjoyed the session, you know what to do. Thank you very much.